Uh, everybody, give a hand for William Terrell. Wow, what a wonderful introduction. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Will Terrell. I'm a cartoonist. I was a kid once, uh, like you guys. I don't know if you can imagine being a grown up. Um, and thinking about when you were a child, what that might be like. But I was a kid once when I was your age, and what I wanted to do when I grow up, I had no idea, because I wasn't good at anything. I went to a lot of different schools. I probably went to nine different schools by the time I graduated. And you can imagine, you don't have a lot of friends when you travel that much, and you kind of slip through the cracks. You don't not, uh, really understand how school works and stuff. And so. I kind of found my own way, and I drew a lot, because that was the only thing I could take with me everywhere I went. And I understand the world by drawing. Anytime I have a question, I write it down in my sketchbook, and I'll draw about it. And then when I find the answer, I'll draw about it also. Uh, if you get a chance sometime, I'll show you one of my sketchbooks. But, um, so back here, this, could you go back a little bit? Yeah, sure. So then, um, um, you'll have to apologize. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I haven't done speaking in front of people, especially a lot of people in a while. I'm trying to do things that scare me, scare me more, so I can be braver about it. And I hope you'll understand. I'm so sorry. I need to see the bar behind your back. Well, I'm <laughs> so sorry. It's okay. So I, when I was little, I always drew, but I wasn't great at it. You can imagine if you're an artist in here and you're like, oh, I've seen other artists and they're much better than I am. I was not. The, I was the one that just kind of drew by themselves in the back. But when I grew up, I decided I wanted to make the world a better place, so I did things like starting this Lubbock Sketch Club where I would mentor other artists, cartoonists, a lot of people your age that are now 20, 30 years old and they have careers doing comic books or illustration or animation, whatever it is. So I taught them, because growing up in Lubbock, there weren't a lot of opportunities for com cartoonists or comic books. I had to travel all over the country to find artists to teach me. We didn't have the internet back then. Now it's pretty easy to find that information. But the thing is, things are changing so much that by the time you guys grow up, everything's gonna be completely different. So like, when I decided I wanted to go on animation, everybody drew on paper. And uh, they would draw it with pencils, and uh, it would take thousands of people to make an animated movie. By the time I got into comic books, everybody was drawing on computers. And I drew all my stuff on pen and ink. And uh, I still draw it on pen and ink because I love the way it feels. Uh, but most people draw on computer now, but now you've got uh, artificial intelligence that's drawing for you. And so people are going to be drawing that way. Um, but the reason that you draw as an artist isn't just to create things to sell. It's to understand the world around you. So these are all people I see around Lubbock or in L.A. when I worked at Warner Brothers. These are all people I see around town. They might even be your parents or grandparents or somebody. <laughs> and you can't, you can't make this up. These are real human beings. And so as a cartoonist, I learned to observe people in the real world in order to do that. So eventually, I, the, I learned the best thing I could do is move away and become successful. That's the best thing I could do for Lubbock. So I moved to California, and I went to an art school out there, which is the way they taught in the Renaissance. It's called an atelier. And it's one master that was taught for 20 years by one master, and everybody in the school is taught by the same teacher. And they taught me how to teach, so I would draw everything around me, paint everything around me. Now, led to be working in animation. I worked for uh, Disney, for um, Warner Brothers for the last seven years, SpongeBob, I worked on Animaniacs, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. Stuff that I never thought I could do before. This is the Warner Brothers lot. And this is where I worked every day. This is the Friends Fountain, that's the background, that's where they filmed all that. That's the first show I was on. It's called uh, Dorothy of the Wizard of Oz. And my heroes were all on that show. Uh, the, can't see him, but his name is Jeff DeGrandis. He created all my favorite cartoons, including Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain. This is the security guards on the line. Mm -hmm. So, pause it right there, if you can. So, I, what, what I started to realize after I finally got my dream job, and you'll find this often in your own life, you'll get what you want, and then you realize that you didn't really want it the same way you thought you did. You wanted it for one reason, and then you get it, and you're like, that doesn't quite feel right. And so you keep going. And I've had probably 10 careers in my life. I've changed. I've been a cartoonist. I've been an animator. I've been a storyboard artist. I've been a, uh, a graphic designer. I used to design t-shirts for all the football teams here in Lubbock for, the, uh, for Texas Tech. You know, and I used to design um, there's tons of advertisements in town. The Dario's Pizza on, on Milwaukee. I designed his logo. You know, but that was, I was just drawing caricature. I used to do caricatures at the South Plains Fair. Anything I could do to learn how to draw. 
But by the time I started working in animation and making money with it, I realized that it didn't feel the same. It didn't mean as much to me. And I wanted to know why I wanted to be an artist. You're just wondering how to draw to begin with, if you're interested in it. But why do we create? Why do we tell stories? And so I started, I had a child, my son Emmett, and I started drawing stories about him. So you can go ahead and pause it. And trying to understand the world that way. <coughs> and um, it made me a better father, it made me a better human being, it made me a better person, thinking of those terms. But the reason I wanted to talk about this particular thing is because there's something that goes along with it, with, with the meaning you seek with drawing, with the meaning you seek with creating. And it's because there's a connection to something greater than us. And you can follow signs all along the way. So this, you can pause it here. When I was working in animation at Burbank, there was a mountain off of the distance. We lived in a valley, they call it the valley. You've probably heard of Valley Girls or the valley in LA. That's because Hollywood is the hills here. There's a Hollywood sign. On the behind of it is the Warner Brothers lot and the Disney lot and the Nickelodeon lot and the DreamWorks lot. And every single movie studio in the country is right there in the valley. And so I would go run around Disney every day. I would run around Warner Brothers every day. I'd go run a jog every morning. And then I'd go get lunch with my friends at, at all these studios. And I'd work with some of the most amazing and talented people in the entire world that I've ever met. Because they all came to the same place. They all wanted to be the best version of themselves they could possibly be. And they followed science all along the way. And I followed science there. And what does that mean to follow science? It means something out of the ordinary happens to you and you're like, I shouldn't do that, but I think I should do it. And you start, you get a question like, well, why do I need this? You start following signs. And so an example of this, there was a mountain in Burbank. You can go down and pause it. And I would stare at it every day. It, had, it wasn't an, a big mountain. There's bigger mountains all the way around, but I, I felt like I had to climb this mountain. And every day for years, I would stare at this mountain, particularly over here in the corner. But yeah, and I drew it. And then finally, after about three years of living there, I finally climbed the mountain. So it's called Miradero. It's a beautiful place. It says old Turkish and uh, Spanish architecture. Miradero means tower with a view. And so I walked it with my son. Really, that meant I carried him on my shoulders the entire time, and my wife. And we get to the top, and I found a sign, a literal sign. Usually, it's not so specific, but I, I found a literal sign. And can you believe what it said? It said, "Attention. Take note of what it feels like to be alive right now." And I really felt that. And I, if I had climbed that mountain, I wouldn't have seen this view, and I wouldn't have seen that sign, I wouldn't have felt that message. And I knew at that moment I had to move back to Lubbock, Texas. And it's, things started happening beyond my control. I came back for a comic convention with my son uh, for Lubbock Con in 2020. And I, I met people, I think I met you, young man here, I met a bunch of other people. And meeting people here made me feel like I belonged in Lubbock and I should come back, it was time to come home. Then the pandemic happened. I'm sure you've had your own experiences. It's been hard for everybody, I'm sure, including for all of you. So go ahead and pause it. What is the most, in question, most important question you can possibly ask? Why is that the most important question? Because whether you're right or wrong, you're true. It's true. It becomes true for you. Whatever you believe, it becomes. So go ahead and push it again. Um, Um, and it's because you're, everything's connected. And if you think you're gonna have, something bad is going to happen, something bad will happen. If you think something good is going to happen, something good will happen. Go ahead and pause that. And this is because the, we are meant to go through scary things. We're meant to do things that scare us and become brave in the process of doing it. Not only that, but we're supposed to convey that information to other people. That's why we tell stories, to make each other stronger. There's things that you didn't know about before you came here today. There's things I didn't know about before I came here today. But we share stories with one another to make each other stronger, to help each other overcome when things are the hardest, to help each other be happy when it's challenging to be happy. And it's, it's a mythology. Every society that has ever existed has had mythology. And it's a mythology. It's the stories that we tell each other to tell our children to, to, to face the scary monster under the bed or under, in the closet, wherever the scary thing is. We all have them, but they're all in our minds, and we have to overcome them. So this is the hero's journey.
If you ever want to find out about storytelling, you, you look up the hero's journey. It's a beautiful thing. It's Star Wars is the, the best version of that because he took the book basically from Joseph Campbell and explained how the hero's journey works. But the part that, uh, that Hollywood leaves out of the hero's journey most of the time is that the hero returns. So a lot of times you see in the movie, the hero gets the girl, they get the trophy, they defeat the enemy, and they walk off and there's fire burning behind them. Who cleans that up? Who rebuilds the world afterwards? The hero does, but the Hollywood leaves that part out of the story. It's our job to make the world a better place. And I felt that since I was a little kid at your age. And I just said, whatever I do in my life, I'm gonna make the world better. I can do that with cartooning, I can do that with serving one another. These are a box of rubber ducks I sent to my boss at Animaniacs because she was having a hard time. Go ahead and pause it. So, um, since I've been back, I've been doing something different with my art. I've been following signs, and I've been creating events. So there's an event my wife and I do at our studio. It's called Give Love, Receive Love. Uh, I, I realized, I'm sure you, if you've caught a glimpse of the news or whatever's going on in the world, a lot of people are angry right now. A lot of people are scared. And it's not your fault if you feel that way too, if you feel angry or scared. But if you feel like you can do something about it, you can do something about it. And so I felt that if love lives in Lubbock, love lives in Lubbock, and love lives in me. And so if you can start with me, let it start with me. And so I started pouring love in every person I met. I'd always done that, it's just I've had certain walls like, I don't know if I should love those people. They don't look like they'd like me if I talk to them. Or I don't know if I should talk to those people because I know they don't like me. But I just start loving everybody. We all experience this in life, the dark night of the soul. You, you're, you're probably too young for it now, but at some point you realize, like, oh man, I, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I never did. A good sign. So that sign inspired me. Now, after I moved back, I made my own sign. I started making signs, literally. I, I had fun with it. I'd think of an idea, I'd learn a lesson, and I'd make a sign out of it. I'd draw it in my sketchbook, and then I'd make an actual sign. Uh, but somewhere along the way, I went on a, a pilgrimage. You'll, you'll probably go on a pilgrimage at some point in your life where you're like, I just, I feel like I keep hitting the wrong answers, and I need to go search for them, whatever that means. And so you just go wander. And I've done it several times in my life, I've wandered. This time I went to Colorado. And I was following signs all along the way. Could you go ahead and pause it? And the funny thing is, I was looking for inspiration because I felt stuck. I was like, how do I, I just quit my job in animation to go love Lubbock. What does that even mean? How do I replace my income? <laughs> and I was following signs and I started drawing this watch for cloud signs. That's one of the first ones I did. I did one called the obstacle, like this is keep smiling. That's what most people know me from, from my YouTube. No judging. I basically took the recycling logo and I put pointy fingers. <laughs> for all I things on. And each time I get an idea that makes me laugh, you did nothing wrong by asking to be treated right. That's one that really seems to resonate with people. Love always. Yeah. Love is always a good sign. Yes. Yes, that's us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Did you enjoy it? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, people sketch it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so my friend Luther, when I met him after we moved back here, he'd been homeless for 22 years, he'd been living on the streets. And he and I were kind of feeling the same thing, like, what, why are we here? What is the point of this? What do we, how do we do something that makes your life feel meaningful? And we started talking more and more, and I just made a new sign, and it said, Obstacle Way. And it's a green sign. I wish I'd brought it with me. Um, and I made it, it just came in, and I, I was laughing when he showed up. I was talking to him about what it would take for him to get off the streets. So I decided to give him the sign. He says, what am I going to do with this? I'm homeless. I don't need a, a sign. And um, I'm, it's going to get stolen or, or, or lost or something. I said, I don't know. I just know I'm supposed to give it to you. It just came in. I feel like I need to give it to you. And so I gave it to him. I said, well, you, can you keep it until I have a place to put it? And I said, sure. And so for, he came back within six months and he had a place to live for the first time in his life. And he got to hold his grandkids for the first time on Father's Day that year. And he got to uh, see his kids again. And it's because I poured love into him. I took the time to get to know him and gave him a sign. And, uh, yeah. Most of us, that's all we're looking for. We're not looking for help. We're just looking for love or a friendship. 
So that's, a, that's a sign right there, obstacle way. Does that look like a good sign? Yeah. So, but an obstacle gets in your way. Why would you go down that street? But it's a good sign, right? Well, that's what's funny about it. Don't read this. Don't read this. The night I got to Colorado on my pilgrimage, I got... My battery died on my phone. And I couldn't figure out how to charge it. And I was looking for a charger. And so I, I woke up the next morning. I, I was driving around. And I said, well, maybe this place up here might have a charger. I kept driving. I kept driving. And I, I was like, no, there's no charger here. But I was following signs, and something told me to keep driving. And I got to the end of the street, and it said, Will Street. And I was like, what? Will Street? That's crazy. And so I, I was like, well, I don't know what's down Will Street, but I'm going to drive down there. And so I drove down on Will Street, got to the end of it, and it was this beautiful like view. Of, it was like a new housing development, and they were a beautiful view of the mountains in Colorado. With, it was just all grass, as far as you could see. And it reminded me of when I was a kid, growing up there. And I turned around, and I noticed that the sign said inspiration. And I'd found my inspiration. I'd been following signs, and I found my inspiration. Literally. And I took a picture of it. And that's how the universe works. You follow signs, you can end up working at Warner Brothers. Or you can work up, end up in front of a sign that says, Will's Inspiration or whatever your name is, whatever you're looking for. But it happens. But you have to choose which type of universe you live in. Do you live in a universe that's friendly, that always wants to look out for you, and is always connected, and it's always, or one that none of that's true, where the universe is mean and hates you, you know? Everybody is angry, everybody hates you. If you believe that, it's true. Everybody that shows up in your life will be angry also. Everybody that shows up in your life will be sad or mad or whatever. It's true. But it's also true if you say, I live in a universe where anything's possible, I can go work at Buena Brothers, I can make people feel loved, I can make the world a better place. That's what I do. And you're fully capable of that too, with whatever you create and however you do it. There are no wrong answers. It's just as long as you're having fun and being kind in the process. Anybody have any questions? It's so quiet. I'm so glad you're all here. You said you would run into me at the convention. What is your name? Come up here, please. It takes a lot of courage to come up in front of me. So thank you. Oh, great. What's going on? Um, I have a dad. Imagine not having a dad and then having a dad. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. May it only get better from here. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. What a wonderful.